Good morning and welcome to Trinity. Good morning. And a happy Memorial Day weekend to everyone. A time of year when we remember those who gave so much and many their lives that we may live ours as we do. So let's please stand, greet each other with a wonderful handshake and a God bless. And if you know someone's in the service, maybe a salute. Please remain standing and we begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Join us in song.
like to welcome this morning's reader up now. The first reading for the Ascension of our Lord is from Acts chapter 1. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 1. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Holy Gospel for this Sunday, Ascension Sunday, is recorded in the Gospel of St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law and the Prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise, from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of all of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with the power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up to heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising God. Here ends the reading of the Holy Gospel. You. you may be seated. seated. During this next song, the prayer cards will be collected, the yellow cards, if you've something in your heart. On your mind, you'd like the church to offer up in prayer. Pass the card to the elder as he comes by. Join us. announcements on this Ascension Sunday. 
Trinity's annual stewardship drive is wrapping up. If you haven't received a pledge card or need another, please check the Narthex. Sending your pledge card is very important because your pledges allow us to create a more accurate budget for the next fiscal year. So please send the pledge card in as soon as possible. And thank you for your generous giving of time, talent, and funds to support Trinity's ministries. The Trinity Summer VBS Roar is an African safari adventure held from June 17th through June 21st, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. each day. Students and their entire crew will learn that God is good and will stay with them forever. Thank you to everyone who has generously contributed to the necessary supplies for VBS. Your, gen your generosity has been amazing and so very much appreciated. Registration is open now. Check your Trinity Weekly or the church website for the link. Tell your friends and neighbors to bring their kids. We kicked off our annual baby bottle campaign for Redeeming Life Maternity Home on Mother's Day, and it goes through Father's Day. Your change can change lives. If you haven't already, please pick up a bottle on your way out, keep it in your car, office, or home. Fill it with all the extra coins and bills from now until Father's Day, or even drop a check in there to support the very meaningful work that Redeeming Life does with mothers and babies choosing life and, and faith first. Thank you. I'd like to introduce my dear brother and sister, David and Gail. Hi. <laughs> when we were asked to speak before you on stewardship, I did a little research on a website called Tithely to help prepare. I then thought about what I was taught about giving by the Bible, my parents, and the church. These are the main foundations that I would like to share with you. The foundation of stewardship is built upon the reality that God is the creator of everything. Not only did God create everything, God owns everything. Your life is on loan from God. He has given you your life to steward for his glory and your good. Psalm 24.1 tells us that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. God calls us to manage what he created on his behalf. In Hebrews 13:5, God commands us not to love money and to be content with what we have. But he also commands us to work and take care of ourselves and our family financially. In doing so, you will fight with balancing to provide for yourself and your family while facing the temptation to want what others have and love money itself. God also leads us to save money for the future. Now when it comes to saving, there is also a temptation to sin. In Matthew 6, 19 through 21, we are advised not to place your trust and hope in the money you save instead of the Lord. What is more, you may be tempted not to give to your church or others because you love your savings too much. Regardless of your beliefs about tithing, one thing you cannot avoid is that God commands you to give generously. Jesus is the most generous person who ever lived. He left the comforts of heaven, took on human flesh, and gave his life on the cross so that we might live in him. In response to Jesus' generosity, we are called to be generous. We are called to be generous with our money. We are called to steward our possessions. We are called to volunteer our time. No one argues over whether Christians should be generous. It's the hallmark of the Christian faith. There will be times in your life when you may not be able to give as much as you like, but aim to steward your resources in such a way that you may be able to give more. Seek the Lord and counsel on how you can best approach your situation. Tag team. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, verses 6 through 7 tells us this. The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows bountifully will reap bountifully. Each one must give as he or her has decided in his heart, not reluctantly, not under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. As a steward of the resources of God, that what he gives you, you will need to manage them in such a way that you can provide for the needs of others. Providing for others uh, can include monetary gifts, food, clothing, or just being hospitable with what you have. When it comes to helping others, God desires you to take care of your family, your church, and those in need. In the end, stewardship in the, in the Bible boils down to just this one question. Who is the Lord of your life? Are you, or is it the Lord? And how do you know this? 
Romans 12:1 tells us, therefore I urge you brothers and sisters in the view of God's mercy, offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Offering your life to God isn't something you do just at one time at the altar or on the days that you feel good. Living sacrificially for God is something that he calls on everyone every day. Practically speaking, Paul explains what is meant here in the next verse of Romans. Uh, this is Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed by the patterns of this world, but be transformed in, by the renewing of your mind. When you are able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. When it comes to offering yourself to the Lord, you are called to renew your mind. Practically speaking, when you renew your mind by studying the Bible, meditating on scripture, and hearing the Bible preached. There are also many opportunities for you to be stewards of your time and volunteer. Many require little upfront training, just as such as showing up, uh, being a greeter, welcoming people, ushering, running the PowerPoint. Uh, these are just to name a few. Others require a little bit more of your commitment and time. And as you season into a, a trained church worker, a volunteer for Christ, those commitments come and you can be taught those things. These are opportunities that allow you to get to know your fellow members as well and form friendships that last a lifetime. When you place your faith in Christ, you will in time transform into a generous giver. We ask you here as a treasurer of the church, also working with the stewardship committee, if you haven't filled one out, we, we would really appreciate your commitment to allow us to plan better. And you've heard that from the brother over here. And uh, we just thank you for that commitment. Before you guys leave, um, just a question, just off the cuff from the heart. I would like to hear from either of you or both of you. What are the fruits in your personal life of being a steward of God's mercies and grace? What are the benefits? You don't have to worry about big vacations. <laughs> you got a big vacation coming at the end of this, so okay. um, really, it's it's uh, stewardship is a is a return. It's sort of like taking a test when you're in college. You know, you listen to the the, the prof teach all this stuff, and you know, I look at the test in a different light. It's your opportunity to shine, and that's that's a stewardship to me. Okay. Gail, yeah. I like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> she wrote it. I just read it. Um, uh, no, I meant she, you didn't see it, but you were. She said, "I want to talk." <laughs> um, real, but um, I would. I just wanted to say that I really don't miss the money I give. I don't think about it as being mine. It's always the first thing that comes out. I was taught from little up that that's what you do. It, you don't miss it if you don't think about it being yours in the first place. And I get more out of it being a member and being a part of the body of Christ my entire life. What I wrote about <clears throat> Having lifelong friends, I see several of you out there that I have grown up with, that I have served in different capacities with, through altar guild, through greeting, through just hugging each other, through the peace. It is a bond, and God creates it in your heart. And you can't know how many times this family has been here for each other through different difficult times. My family, my family's been here for other families and just that rewarding experience that comes from it. Yeah, we come a long ways to get here, but it's worth it every time that we're here. And it is a family, and you plug into it, and you will be energized, and you will be become a stronger part of that. That's it. And I would just like to say it is really about time, talents, and treasures, and I think you too, as a couple and as individuals, model that uh, in your giving spirit and generous. Thank you, and can we thank them? Thank him, yeah.
almost feel like we should just say amen and go to the next song. He's just wonderful, wasn't it? Wow. Wow. Um, last weekend, for those of you who were here with us <laughs> during the, uh, the, the hot service, we found out what happened. There was a squirrel that was practicing for his high wire act with Barnum and Bailey. And it was on the high wires over the church sanctuary, and uh, he, uh, he had a, a jolting experience, I'll put it that way. So that tripped the breakers off, and as a result, OUC and Brownie Electric came to the rescue, and the Lord heard our prayers. I think we had AC for the last 10 minutes of the confirmands. Uh, confirmation Sunday at the 11 o'clock service, so it's good. I'd like to share with you from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 to 9. If you want to go to the Pew Bible, 2 Corinthians 8, 1 to 9, or on your cell phones, do so. Paul writes, we want you to know, brothers, of the grace of God that is given among the churches of Macedonia. Out of the severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. I just share with you about the context. The mother church, Jerusalem, was suffering greatly. In fact, there was a, a collection being taken up for the mother church of Christianity because of the persecution, the, the uh, people being sent out being, because of the persecutions and whatnot to surrounding areas. But the Christian church had spread and grown and so the churches around Jerusalem were gathering up this offering. Macedonian churches were the poorest of them, and the poorest of them also out of the generosity of the wealth of all that they, God had done for them, they gave thanks and responded, and their mercy and their grace overflowed in a wealth of generosity. Why would they do that? Giving beyond their means. Why? I'd like to have you think in your own mind, if you will, of what it means to be in God's family, of what God has done personally for you in your life. And I'd like to have you have a picture of that before I go on. I'll give you a moment. Do you have a picture of that? A prayer that was answered, a job that was given, a healing, your salvation, the promise of life everlasting. What is it? There's a story of a group of Christians that were gathered to worship and praise God on an Easter Sunday. When Pastor Paul Sernira, director of Bibles in the Middle East, tells of the story of how he and other Christians were rescued from the clutches of death by a group from three lions. Sanira and his group were under attack from Muslim militants. When the giant cats attacked and scared the murderous group away, my risen Lord Jesus Christ, he says, has saved my life once again. And I praise and thank God for his unspeakable grace. It was Easter Sunday when this miracle took place. The pastor was recovering in the home of some friends in their home where an armed group came and had stoned them earlier in that day. Suddenly this same group of militants returned and when they'd reached the house armed with steel bars and other weapons, they had come back to kill the pastor and those who were with him. Pastor Sanira thought it was the end of the road. This was his final day. He feared for the life of the 80-year-old man who owned the home and of the several children who were there with him, taking refuge. Losing all hope, we thought this was for sure our last day. They had only one more thing to do, and that was the militants would break down that door that separated them from those who would harm them and kill them. The Christians decided to pray, and pray they did. 
Sanira writes, then something truly biblical took place. Completely, unexpectedly, a lion ran out of the forest and leapt towards the militants. It grabbed and seized one of them by the throat and neck. And when the other combatants tried to attack that lion, two other lions bounded toward them. The terrified militants now fled from the site for their own life, and the lions left the Christians completely alone. What is quite remarkable, records show that lions do not live in this part, in this forest of this country. Hmm. As you think about the hand of God intervening into those who would have otherwise harmed these Christians. And on Easter Sunday, the Sunday in which we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord and the power of his might over death, God again revealed his hand over death to spare these Christians. Now, as you and I start to think about it, what is it that you are so very thankful for? When you and I start to think about the fact that Jesus Christ died upon the cross and the only purpose was so that you and I could spend eternity with him in heaven, the only reason God would send his only begotten son is because he could not see that you and I would not be there. He loved you and me that much that he would send his own son to suffer and to die as the, Ju the Lion of Judah to attack the enemy of death, the devil, and to drive him away. Jesus, from his own veins, his blood would be shed and would pay for the price of your sins and mine. And because of that great sacrifice, God would look upon us and see his son died for you and me, and as a result, he, Jesus Christ, is the one who is our mediator, our advocate, and before the Father's throne, our sins are announced forgiven. And our names are written in the book of life. Wow. You know, Jesus could have ended the story at Good Friday. But God wanted you and me to believe that he really did rise from the dead. And so there was a resurrection, as was foretold in the Old Testament. Jesus was raised on the third day. He was seen by his disciples. He was seen by the women who went to the tomb. He was seen by the Emmaus disciples walking back on the road. And all of them came back to that place where the disciples in fear had gathered behind locked doors. And then Jesus himself appears to show himself alive. And that happened for some days nearly 49 of them, 50 of them. And then it came to this time that we just read about the ascension of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus. As if all of this wasn't yet enough, Jesus gathers his disciples and he gives them instructions on what they are to do, how the church should be run, you might say, and where they're supposed to go and baptize all nations, teaching them all things whatsoever I've commanded. And you know the rest of those commands that speak of love and forgiveness and all that message. But I'd like to have you look at this statue. We don't worship it, but it reminds us that Jesus, the one that's risen from the dead, as you look at his hands in the statue here, there's nail prints. Jesus rose from the dead but he also ascended into heaven. And the Bible tells us that he's going to prepare a place for you and for me. And he said, all of that's good, that I go, because I'm also sending the Holy Spirit. As if all of this wasn't enough, he's now sent his own Holy Spirit to be with us, to lead us into all the truth, to understand and to believe in all things that Jesus is and would ever be, that we would understand the will of God. And that's what's going on as you and I start to see 
the rescue and redemption of the Macedonians, of the Jerusalem church, of these Christians and this nation that were rescued by lions or by you and me. Paul says of them, they gave out of the earnestness of their hearts. They gave according to their own means, but also beyond their means. And they even begged us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the church in Jerusalem. <coughs> As you and I begin to think about all that God has done and we just talked about, what is it that you might say thank you, Jesus, with? In your time, in your talents, in your treasures, how might you live a generous and godly life? The Macedonians first gave themselves. That was the gift. They wanted to say, Jesus, I'm in. I'm here to serve. I'm ready. I'm reporting for duty. And Paul calls it in, second, or in Romans chapter 12, being a living sacrifice where the transforming and renewal of our minds occurs. And as you and I start to see that, we start to see that it's there that the work of the Holy Spirit begins in our heart. It's not in our hip, our checkbook. It's in our heart and in our mind. That's where God looks at us as we respond out of thankfulness to all that God has given us. The Wilcoses said and reminded us that everything we have it's from God. It's not ours. It's His. And all we're doing out of thankfulness from all He's poured out upon our laps, shaken together, as Luke talks about, poured together, all that He's given us, we just respond by saying, thank you. Thank you with this, Lord, because I just want to say, thank you. They first gave themselves and they excelled in the giving beyond what Paul had predicted. And then Paul says, I'd say this not as a command that you give, but to rather prove your earnestness of others that your love also would be genuine. When you and I start to look at Trinity Lutheran Church, I would like to say thank you for two things. Thank you to each and every one of you who've been so generous in your support of this ministry. Thank you. And as you give, my hope is you realize, yes, it comes to help the ministry of Trinity, but your giving is really to the Lord. Out of a relationship, you are giving a response to your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And out of that relationship and that response, you are just saying, thank you, Jesus. For all you've done and together we are able to do so many things to minister to this community and I want to say thank you thank you be also because of this shortfall that we have gone through and experienced we are going to make it through it by the generosity that you as God's children have been able to respond with I say thank you and through proper stewardship and management of those funds, we have and will make it through. We look at the future and the things that are lying ahead and we see the many possibilities. And I look at that tower that is now standing above and looking over the, the, uh, uh, across the street. And I believe the building will be about as tall because the crane has to reach the top. So if you want to know how tall 13 stories is, look out there when you go out. You'll see how tall our neighbor's building will be. And what opportunities does that give for us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ? I hope and I pray that you and I are aware of that because you and I must also realize that our congregation is here as we've heard from Jesus who is ascending into heaven, the marching orders go and make disciples, baptizing and teaching telling people about him. 
you realize that over 40% of the people that live in Orange County, Florida, Orlando, do not claim any church affiliation. 40%. But do you realize in a more alarming statistic is that any given Sunday or weekend that, or throughout the week, we will see that less than one in five people will actually come and worship Jesus Christ. It's actually 18%. And so when you and I start to see the immensity of what God is doing and placing as an opportunity for us, right across the street, and in this community, with our Child's Development Center, we have so many wonderful opportunities to share and to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, because I'll tell you this much. I received a phone call this morning and one of our brothers and sisters are hurting because her husband was called home this morning. Larry Evancheck. I know where Larry's going to be. He'll be in heaven with Jesus. But as you and I start to look at it and think about it, we want to make sure that the people we set across the table from the people that live in our homes, the people we work with, our neighbors too, we want to make sure that those relationships have a connection to Christ. And as a result, have an opportunity for them to be saved by the Lion of Judah, the Lord of life, the Redeemer who rose, named Jesus. As you and I start to look at our opportunities here at Trinity, as you think about pledging, Paul writes and instructs us in the ninth chapter of 2 Corinthians that they gave according to their plan, their determination. They thought about what they were going to give. And then he says, but they didn't give it under compulsion because God loves a cheerful giver. As you think about your offering of time, of talents, or of treasures, I hope and I pray that you will remember that simple truth. God loves a cheerful giver. And as you give cheerfully, it will be such a blessing, not only to those you're giving it to, but to you. It has been for me. In Jesus' holy name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the true faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand. We make confession of our faith this week in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. The offering will be collected during this next song. Please join us.
Lord and Savior Jesus, we ask that you would bless our congregation with the same sending that you gave your disciples into the world of going and making disciples, baptizing and teaching. Help us to be clothed with the power from on high. As we study your word, as we recall our own baptisms, and even today as we receive the heavenly feasts called Holy Communion, strengthen us to share, to speak boldly and confidently, to pray for and with others who are going through troubling times. Surround them with people like us who are there to serve you and to serve and uplift them. Help us, O oh Lord, to be your hands and feet in the world in which we live. Lord, in your mercy. On this Memorial Day, Lord, we remember and recall all those who have fallen in combat, serving this great country, protecting our freedoms and giving us even the freedom to worship according to our will, according to your will in our lives. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you would never allow our memories to fade for all that they've sacrificed or given, but especially, Lord, for your sacrifice that you gave so that we would be your soldiers to share your news and to fight on the battlefield of faith. Lord and Savior Jesus, hear our prayer. Lord, finally, we ask that you would hear the prayers that have been requested by your children. Gracious Heavenly Father, we pray for healing and health for Chad, who had cancer surgery. We pray for a good outcome and restoration of good health. And for Anne, healing in her battle with cancer. And for Sandy, Malia, Randy, and Tom, also battling cancer. Father, we pray for Jamie, uh, healing from complications from surgery. And for Livia Lee, God's blessings as she recovers from a car accident. We also pray for your healing powers for Jim, Corey, Ken, Sally, Herman, Gail, Hazel, Carolyn, Georgia, Rob, Betty, Hudson, and William, with their, help them with their health concerns. Father, we pray, we ask you for peace, comfort, and understanding for Mary Lou at her loss for her husband Larry this morning and also for the families and friends of Ed and for Sergeant Dan Parker. Praise and thanks to our veterans and to Chad, Amanda, Paul, Henry, John, Luke, Quinn, Ralph, and William who are currently serving our nation in the military. Father, send your blessings and protection to those who are at this moment gathering just two blocks from our door to speak for your unborn children. Protect those unborn children from those who would harm them and end their lives in the womb. And Father, enter the hearts and minds of those protesting for the right to end the lives of those children. Remind them, Lord, that only you have the decision over life and death. Guide those contemplating an abortion to places such as, <coughs> such as Redeeming Life Ministries where they can receive the help they and their unborn child need. Father, Praise and thanksgiving for the safe delivery of eight-week-old premature Charlotte. Continued growth and progress and healing for her mother, Megan, after the C-section. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had broken it, he gave thanks and he gave it unto them, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given unto death for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, in the same manner, he took the cup, and when he had supped and had given thanks, he gave it unto his disciples, saying, Take and drink ye all of it, for this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is given and is shed for you for the remission of all your sins. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. you. May be 
be seated. So 
And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring you his peace. Amen. To everyone, please have a very blessed and safe Memorial Day. Join us in song as we sing our way out. serve the Lord with joy.